Hey guys, have you ever thought of wanting that perfect post-apocalypse setting in Minecraft? A world where the dead roam the night and the day. A world where the virus mutates in ways that are unpredictable for the player. But also a hopeful world where you can explore, find other settlers, some of which you can befriend and explore together with, and some people, uh, let's just say they might need some therapy. Anyways, there's so much more that makes this the perfect post-apocalypse setting, so let's jump straight into it. The first piece of the puzzle is Tissue Zombie Pack, along with some Sooth Shaders. The Tissue Zombie Pack just changes the zombies textures and add diversity to your zombies look with hundreds of zombie variants. Next on the list is Optifine of course, and some shaders. Now the shaders are completely optional, but I do highly recommend it to get the most immersive experience. I myself am going with Zeus Renewed, but I am tweaking the settings a little bit so you can get some more FPS increase and also make the shaders look less subtle. Finally, to top off the look, let's add the fresh animations mod. This just adds some little animation to the zombie and also other entities to make them just feel more alive. Now before we get to the world building, we must first get our zombies sorted. First, we are going to be installing Day Zombie Rebooted. This mod simply spawns zombie in the day and you can fully customize the spawn rates to your liking. Now, if we pair this mod with Mob Sunscreen and Zombie Awareness, boom, you've got yourself a proper zombie. These proper zombies don't burn in the day and their awareness is much better. Now the zombies are able to scent for your blood if you're low on health, plus if you make any sound of any sort or if you're holding a torch, Zombies can detect those things, so you're gonna need to step up your survival game. Now with the zombies sorted, let's get to the world building. We want the world to feel more alive by adding structures like cities, hospitals, pharmacies, and a bunch more to explore. And we can start doing this by installing the Zombie Extreme mod. This is a massive mod. It will add a bunch of structures that you can raid for things like first aid kit, canned food, weapons, and so much more. Also, you can every now and then stumble across some survivors with this mod pack and even trade with them. And of course, as the name state, you will also get some more of zombie variants. Like you can come across some zombies that are wearing hazmat suits, some will look like the military, and a few zombies can explode. You will also find some bigger zombies like brutes, but the coolest variant in my opinion is definitely the infected animals. You can come across an infected bear or wolf every now and then. The nights in a zombie apocalypse is supposed to be something you dread. So hopefully this next mod can help with that. By installing the Enhanced Celestial mod, every now and then you'll be faced with the challenge of a Blood Moon, which essentially increases the zombie spawn rates and prevents the player from sleeping. But this mod is not all bad. Some nights you'll get a Harvest Moon or a Blue Moon, which apparently increases your luck by increasing the quality of loot in loot tables. Uh, back to the Harvest Moon though, when this moon rises, you might want to grab your hose because it will make farming a lot easier. The crop growth and drop rates will increase, giving you a good opportunity to replenish your food. Next for this section, we will be making the world feel a lot more like a post-apocalypse wasteland by installing some mods like Power Armor. This mod is very Fallout inspired. The mod adds proper dungeons underground with the raiders and their creepy lore that I'll leave for you to uncover. But you are rewarded for exploring these creepy places because these dungeons contain parts to build toward a Power Armor which has got to my inner Fallout fanboy to go nuts. For those who don't know, these power armors are essentially very strong suits that you can make that have many cool functions like missile launchers, the ability to fly, and so much more. So at the moment, the world is looking pretty hopeless. So let's give you a chance to rebuild civilization. We can do this by adding the Guard Villagers mod, which spawns in some villagers with some combat skills to help out but you can also hire more unemployed villagers to be guards. The good thing with this mod is that the guards are pretty intelligent, they will not get into each other's way, and they also go to the blacksmith to actually repair their damaged weapons. Overall, this gives a great chance for the villagers to survive without the player needing to be present at all times. Talking about villages, it would be pretty smart for some villages to move to the safety of the underground during this apocalypse, and that's exactly what the stone home mod adds. This mod just makes villages spawn underground and you can even convert these spaces into your own little safety house or just let the villagers be. Now let's top the world building off with some little details like biomo plenty, which you had to have seen that one coming. The mod just adds a bunch of biomes and revamp the terrain so it feels more natural. It also pairs really well with the Lost Cities mod 
which is another must have. The mod just adds naturally spawning cities to your world and you can play around with how often they, you want them to spawn and you can also select the option to spawn in the ruined cities which is perfect for the cherry on top for your world. You get the buildings to build your base, a bunch of loot, and the buildings are also not made with things like iron blocks because that would just feel a little bit cheaty. To make things a little bit more difficult and kind of force you to build shelter, we're going to be adding some weather mods. These mods will add seasons to your world where in some seasons the seasons are cold and this decreases the crop growth rate. One of my favorite things about this weather mod is it adds acid rain which causes damage to players, your animals, and even your crops. It only makes sense in an apocalypse that there will be some radiation in the rain. To add the final touches to your worlds, we're going to be adding a few detail mods like Valhalla Structures, Young's Bridges, and the Stables mod. These mods will just add structures into your world to make it feel more worn down and alive at the same time. These structures don't really serve a grand purpose, but I think it will make exploring a lot more fun. Every now and then you will stumble across the occasional castle, tower, and naturally spawning bridges and stables where you can meet the stable master and perhaps trade some of your items. Additionally, I'm gonna put some decorative and useful mods in there like Makah's fence mod that allows you to craft those barbed wires that you see in every zombie apocalypse movie and also a bunch of beautiful doors. Also, you might want some decorations in your builds, so I think Mr. Crayfish's furniture mod is perfect for that. It adds the most vanilla looking furniture like fridges, tables, bins, anything you can think of really. And they also have very unique functionalities to them. Now let's add some quality of life mods like security craft, dynamic surroundings, some spartan weapon mods, and also bad mods which prevent any mods other than zombies to spawn. These are not massive mods, but they will make it a much more immersive experience for you. Alright, I think we have got a good collection of mods here, so let's see how all of this would work together. So let's put this to the test with some gameplay footage. <laughs> 